Now we want to make our build configuration a bit more sophisticated so it in fact compiles the code. So let me just run it again because I want to check out the code again. So the build is running build number two and if I click on success and I go to build log what I can see here is basically the working directory okay and I can go to finder and go to that folder so as you see the code has come here if you are a windows user please don't get confused this is exactly like windows explorer all we are seeing in here is all the code that I have checked out so I want to open a command prompt or a terminal terminal in mac is equivalent of windows explorer so if I get list of files, we see that we have a project file in here. So this is a .NET Core application. If you want to compile a .NET Core application, you just use a command line tool called .NET, similar to PHP or Java. So if you are using something else like PHP, just use PHP. And in order to compile or publish a .NET Core, we can do .NET. You can restore all the packages with .NET Restore first. It says Restore Completed, and then we can say .NET Publish and we can have the name of the project that we want to compile. Optionally, you can have an output directory. For example, we can say put it in build and then publish starts. Publish includes basically compilation and packaging everything. So if I go back to my explorer, there is a build folder and the output of that compilation has come here. So if you want to build and package this code in TeamCT, you have to do the exact same steps only with TeamCT. So step one was restoring all the packages and dependencies. And second step was basically compiling it and publishing it. So in order to do that, we have to click on build configuration and on top right corner of the screen, you have edit configuration settings. We go back to all the settings. So with version control settings, we managed to connect to the source code. Now in order to restore the dependencies and to publish the source code, we have to go to build steps. Every step that you take to compile or test or package your source code happens in build steps. It has an auto detect build steps, but honestly, it's not very reliable. It's much better that you create your build steps manually. So I can add a build step and there are a lot of operations that come out of the box with TeamCity that you can use. For example, I can use .NET CLI or .NET command. It's exactly what I just used a minute ago to compile that code. You can use AND, you can use command line. For example, you can run PowerShell scripts, you can run Docker scripts, you can upload file to FTP. There is a Maven here, there is MS build for .NET framework. There are loads of tools you can use. If there is any tool in here that you don't have have best thing is to basically use command line or if you are on windows you can use powershell and run a script in order to compile and package your code in my case i can use .NET. if you remember the first command that i used was .NET restore so we can do it here as well and step name can be restore dependencies something like this and the project for a restore command you don't need to specify a project but if you want you can specify the solution name and that's it and the second command i ran was publish so for that we need to add another step again i choose .NET. for this one we can call it publish and the command should be publish the project was cicd demo.cs and output directory can be, for example, again, build. Okay, just to make sure I'm not packaging the existing files, we can delete these as well. So as you see in here, I'm using dot forward slash. Make sure you are not creating and you are not using any folder outside your working directory or working folder. So all the things that happen when you are within a build configuration is basically happening in your work folder. And therefore all the other uh, folders that you create and use, it has to be relative and it has to be inside the work folder. So I click on save so what happens now if i run this build configuration three things will happen the first thing that always happens is the version control system will clone the code or check it out and then it goes and starts running through these build steps so first thing is clone the code in here second restore all the dependencies third publish the code so let's go and run this again 
If you are new to TeamCT, it's very, very likely that at the beginning, when you create a build configuration, it fails for so many reasons. And you should not be getting disheartened if you see your build fails. Normally, you have to do it 10 times until you get it right. But then after that, you know what you're doing. So again, we go to here, we have build log. And you see every step has a log in here. The first one is, as I said, checking out or cloning the code. And then step one is running .NET restore command. So it says zero warnings, zero errors. So restore was successful. And we have a step two of two, which is .NET publish. Again, zero errors, zero warnings. Uh, it's going to build folder. So if we go back, all the files are back. I deleted them, but they're back because the build was successful. So this is how we compile and build the code. As you see, it's very easy. So I let you practice. And then in the next lecture, we work on artifacts.